Tardy Thomas. I was late once more. I missed the main event. The trek from Persia had my strength fully spent before I gained Ephesus. So I had sadly lent myself a day or two of rest, though urgency was pent up in my breast. When I at last arrived, the scene was o'er and done. Yet they were not contrived, my tears and mournful moan, but from my deepest soul. My fellows smiled sad smiles, and led me by the hand to where death's wiles had made them understand the cost of sin which held full fast e'en one in whom sin's hint was quelled, God's mother's occult tomb. I stood a while in thought. How did she pass? I asked. Peter shook his head. James' shoulders shrugged. John looked at me and said, she breathed her last in peace. She squeezed tightly my hand, joy visiting her face, as she did see an angel band descending from the sky, and in its midst her son, her saviour and her God, who life and joy has won for all this vale have trod. Roll back the stone, I made my stern demand that I may hold one final tardy time her hand, that I may view her face. So Peter and his frere Andrew put shoulder to the rock which blocked the view, that once disclosed did shock. For that full gracious tent her body was displaced, and in its place was scent of roses. We were faced with mystery sublime, and yet we well did ken the cause of our lost keen. It was the call to heaven of our all-holy queen.